What if the best way to build a new space station was to begin with an old space station? The ISS may be running short on time, but for its last great purpose, the station could act as a platform to build the future. This is the space race. Is the Axiom Station actually a next-generation Space Phoenix, or is it more like the ISS version 2.0? The biggest advantage given to Axiom is this ability to construct their new station on the back of the existing space station. Axiom will be the first and only private company allowed to dock their own module to the ISS. That is happening in 2026, and then each subsequent year, Axiom will deliver an additional module until they've literally built a self-sufficient space station that can simply kick off from the old one like a baby bird leaving a nest. Except, in this case, the nest is going to plummet into Earth's atmosphere and incinerate. Now, that begs the question, how come this one company gets such a sweet and exclusive deal? The thing about Axiom is that they are kind of like the Nepo baby of private spaceflight companies. So, most of these new generation aerospace startups are founded by strapping young lads who are eager to change the world and rewrite the outer space playbook. Looking at the team roster for Axiom Space, and the first thing you'll see is old guys. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's kind of worth noting that the people in charge of the new space station are the same people who were in charge of the old space station. Axiom is led by this guy, Michael Suffredini, who previously worked for NASA and served as the program manager for the International Space Station from 2005 to 2015, and he personally oversaw the station's transition from assembly to operation and commercial utilization. And Axiom co-founder Dr. Cam Gafarian was the head of NASA's second largest engineering services contractor, responsible for training NASA astronauts and handling operation of the ISS. Moving down the list, you can see that most of the Axiom leadership are former NASA executives who have migrated over to the private sector, who now have the unique opportunity to build a whole new space station on top of the old space station that they already built 20 years ago. Again, not that there's anything wrong with that, and honestly, when talking about spaceflight, we do have a tendency to undervalue experience and overvalue ambition. But anyway, that's an interesting part of the story that doesn't get mentioned very often. The most exciting thing about Axiom Space is that they already have a lot of work in progress. While most other space station concepts are stuck in the computer rendering phase, Axiom has begun construction of their first module that will operate in low Earth orbit. That is a big head start. HAB-1 is expected to launch as early as late 2025, but more likely will be sometime in 2026. The purpose of this module is to provide living quarters that support four crew members, plus some extra volume for them to perform some small-scale research projects. The first thing that you'll notice about the Axiom crew quarters is that they provide a much higher level of comfort than the existing ISS. The individual pods are more reminiscent of those Japanese capsule hotels and provide each Axiom crew member a private room with touchscreen monitors, LED lighting, and their own window with a view of the Earth. These sleeping pods were designed by the French architect Philippe Stark, who says that he was inspired to create a nest, a comfortable and friendly egg which would feature materials and colors stemming from a fetal universe. So I guess that's a Kubrick Space Odyssey kind of vibe. Stark goes on to say the walls are sprinkled with hundreds of nano LEDs with changing colors as a continuation to the view of the universe through the large windows. Just as all the shades of lights and colors of day and night, the egg will also live to the mood and biorhythm of its osmotic inhabitant. Whatever that means, I'm not exactly sure, but it does sound cool. This Axiom module will dock to the forward port of the ISS Harmony module and become a permanent fixture of the space station. Then we get to Axiom HAB-2, which is expected to launch one year after HAB-1 and will be more or less a double of the first module that extends the total crew capacity to eight people in the Axiom segment of the ISS. 
This second module will also provide an independent life support system to the Axiom segment and will include a Canada Arms style robotic manipulator. The Axiom research and manufacturing facility comes next. That's going to dock to the side port of HAB2 to start forming an L shape, and the idea with this one is to provide access to the unique microgravity environment of low Earth orbit as a platform to conduct innovative research, product development, process improvement, and manufacturing. The next one isn't so much a new module as just a really cool accessory to the Axiom segment. Their Earth Observatory is basically a glass dome that can fit an entire person inside. It's going to be mounted to the underside of HAB2, and it will allow for a nearly 360 degree view of the Earth and outer space. The finishing touch of Axiom Station is going to be a power thermal module. This serves as an extra storage and payload space, but more importantly is going to be linked into Axiom's dedicated solar panel array to power the segment and handle climate control. With these four modules and one extremely fancy window, the Axiom segment of the ISS can now detach from the main station and operate as a standalone platform. So this Axiom Station concept is one of the top four commercial space station concepts that NASA is backing with their financial support. They've also handed out development contracts to Blue Origin, NanoRax, and Northrop Grumman to support the creation of additional low Earth orbit destinations. And like we said earlier, Axiom Space is the only company that's been granted the very sweet privilege of piggybacking their station development on top of the existing ISS. NASA needs to ensure that they have a future platform for operating in low Earth orbit. The ISS is already stretched past its best before date, and they are really looking at 2030 as the time when it will finally need to be decommissioned and deorbited. So NASA is ready to embrace the commercial space industry, but at the same time, they kind of need to make sure that their own interests are being given priority. No one knows how someone like Blue Origin is going to run a space station. It's going to be a brand new frontier. In Axiom, NASA sees themselves, literally. Axiom is NASA. These are the same people who were in charge of the ISS in the last decade. Now they've traded in their public sector careers and gone private to carry that expertise on into the next decade. So we know that NASA and Axiom are going to get along fantastically. And that's obviously why Axiom has been trusted enough to jump straight into operating on board the ISS in tandem with NASA. Axiom's senior director of InSpace Solutions explained this in an interview earlier this year. He said, quote, We're working with NASA to make sure that we follow all the requirements that the ISS has today so that we can build our models for the future to those requirements. So it's also no surprise that Axiom was the first private company to fly a crew of private citizens to the ISS aboard AX-1 in April 2021, and they did the same mission again in May of this year with AX-2, an eight-day privately funded excursion to the ISS. To accomplish this, Axiom is leveraging a partnership with SpaceX to use the Crew Dragon vehicle and Falcon 9 rocket. So who are these people going to space and what are they doing up there? Axiom has made a point to ensure that their private space tourists aren't just up there getting in the way or treating the ISS like a space hotel. The crew of AX-1 included one experienced NASA astronaut serving as mission commander, along with three paying customers, a real estate entrepreneur, Larry Connor, Canadian investment CEO, Mark Pathy, and Israeli investor, Eitan Stibbe, each of whom reportedly paid $55 million for a spot. Their week in space was occupied with completing 25 research experiments developed for microgravity and up to a dozen pre- and post-flight experiments. Each very rich man was allowed to bring along research projects that were relevant to their particular interest and philanthropy. So it is a way of getting important experiments into space that may have never gotten the opportunity otherwise. AX-2 was a slightly more diverse group. In addition to their former astronaut mission commander, this flight included John Schaffner, who is a very wealthy race car driver who wanted to pilot a spaceship. But this flight also brought Ali Alkarni and Rayana Barnawi, who are members of the Saudi Space Commission. So these private missions are actually helping to expand international access to outer space, which is pretty cool. And Axiom themselves actually get to learn a lot from these week-long excursions to the ISS. They are using their customers as test subjects to monitor the effect of life in space on, I guess what you might call, normal people. 
So astronauts are basically the top 1% of human beings, ultra smart, ultra capable, physically fit, healthy, disciplined. They have the right stuff, as goes the term coined by author Tom Wolfe, who wrote the book on the Apollo program. But what happens when you just launch some dude into outer space who is not operating at the peak of human capability? Well, we're not really sure, but if we're going to make this idea of commercial spaceflight a legitimate business, then we need to understand more about how a variety of human bodies respond to the environment of low Earth orbit. And we need to figure out the best way to help people mitigate the negative effects that come along with life in space. Because as much as the Axiom Station is going to serve as a continuation of the ISS, it's also got to function as the first space hotel. That's why the giant window is there. Let's not pretend that is anything other than a marketing feature designed to inspire billionaires to drop fat stacks of cash on trips to outer space so they can experience that view for themselves. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.